Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our build deploy test with Jenkins and Docker and this is an advanced section. And in this video we're going to talk about pipeline as a code with Jenkins and complete walkthrough. And in our last video we discussed how pipeline as a code with Jenkins is going to transform the way the CI CD build is going to happen with our project as opposed to the classical way of working with Jenkins using freestyle project and with a pipeline project with scripted pipeline syntax. So let's quickly jump into a machine and this time I'm gonna show you how we can spin up a Docker container for Jenkins LTS or the long-term support build and how we can install the Blue Ocean theme which was not there while we released this course on 2017. But now a bit has changed this time. I'm gonna quickly walk through how the installation is gonna happen as well even though we have already discussed about it but this time we're just gonna go a quick walkthrough of how to do an installation and then we will start creating a simple pipeline as a code with Jenkins. All right, so let's get started. All right, so this is my machine and this time I'm gonna use the Windows terminal to show you how we can actually run a Docker container. So you can see that this is my customized Windows terminal. There are so many different themes and the color schemes available. I'm gonna create a separate video on how you can customize the Windows terminal and how you can set the different customization for a diff different terminals and all those details. But just for now, because in order to not deviate from the topic that we are gonna be discussing this time, I'm gonna show you how we can spin up the Docker container for the Jenkins image. So I'm just gonna go to the Edge Chrome browser and if I just search for Jenkins uh, Docker image, as you can see in here, and there is this GitHub link, which is the one which has the official repo of all the uh, Jenkins CI. And you can see that this is the usage of how you can execute the Jenkins Docker container. So this is the image, as you can see the Jenkins and the LTS is the long-term support. So this is something which is not gonna change a lot. So it's gonna be a long-term support, at least after six months, the build will be changed. But if you just take the Jenkins with the latest one, it is gonna update like every one week if there is any new updates gonna happen. So I would recommend you to just go with the LTS because that's kind of stable. So I'm just gonna copy this whole command and I'm gonna go to my terminal and over here, I'm just gonna do this uh, Docker uh, images. I'm just gonna show you if I really have other Docker image sitting in my machine. And you can see that I already have Jenkins with LTS downloaded within my machine. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spin up the Docker Jenkins and then I'm gonna run and see how the execution is gonna happen. So let me just clear the screen and I'm gonna paste this command. I'm just gonna hit enter. So this way it is gonna start a all new fresh Jenkins container and you can see that this time when it starts it is gonna give me the secret password uh, which is something we can use for setting the Jenkins itself. So you can see that it's all up and running and if I go to the uh, local host colon 8080 because that's what is the port that I have mapped over here if you can see in my terminal. So this is the port that I am mapping into the 8080 and that's why it's coming in here. Paste the secret password, I'm gonna hit continue and then it's gonna ask me to install the suggested plugins. So I'm just gonna install all the suggested plugins because it is something required. So what happens right now is just to recollect Right now we are trying to spin up a Jenkins Docker container and this Docker container is gonna have all these plugins within it and it is gonna install within that particular container. As you can see right now, it is just doing all the installation. So if I open a new tab and if I just do Docker PS hyphen A, it is gonna show me uh, what is currently uh, executing. So you can see that this guy is currently executing over here. Docker installation is also happening with all the plugins. Well, this is happening, I'm also gonna do one more thing within our GitHub repo of Execute Automation. So if I go to the GitHub repo of our Execute Automation over here, I don't really have any repositories for uh, Jenkins Docker over here. I have Jenkins Pipeline Advanced, so don't worry about it yet. We're gonna talk about this in this particular series, but I'm gonna create a new repository this time, and I'm gonna call this as Jenkins Basics. So uh, maybe Jenkins Pipeline. So I'm just gonna call this as Jenkins Pipeline. And this repo is for demons, is uh, going to demonstrate Jenkins Pipeline. And this is gonna be public. And I'm gonna hit create repo. 
So this way I'm gonna use this repo for all my operation that I'm gonna be doing. So I'm just gonna copy this repository over here and while the installation is happening for Docker still, I'm just gonna open uh, another terminal over here and uh, let's, oops, let's try to create a directory and let's call this as Jenkins Pipeline Basic. And this is the directory where I'm just going to show you all the different uh, pipeline syntaxes and declarative syntax and working with Jenkins and all those details. So I'm just gonna open Visual Studio Code over here. We can do a git pull over here itself, but I'm gonna show you how we can do with Visual Studio Code much, much easily. You can press Control Shift P, which is gonna open this quick navigation option where you can also do something called as a git clone, as you can see, or maybe if you just put git colon, you can see all the different options for the git comes in. And we're gonna choose the git clone from the GitHub. I have already made the authorization, that's why you can see all my repos coming in. And this is the repo that we just created, the Jenkins uh, pipeline repo. So I'm just gonna select that. And it's gonna ask me which folder I'm gonna put this particular uh, repo. So I'm just gonna put this in my C colon. And you can see that the Jenkins pipeline is now uh, sitting for me over here, which is pretty cool. So all good right now. So Jenkins pipeline is now talking with our GitHub repo. So if I do any add operation over here, that is gonna be coming in for us over there. But as of now, we don't really require this particular Visual Studio code, but I have just made this setup because we'll be requiring this in our future videos. But as of now, this setup is gonna be something that you should be having as well while the Jenkins installation is happening. Seems like Jenkins installation has happened, so I'm just gonna give the username password as admin, admin, and uh, I'm just gonna give my email address. Just gonna hit save and continue, and save and finish. So Jenkins is up and running right now, and it's ready for us to perform all the different operations. So I'm just gonna go to the manage Jenkins, and if I go to the manage plugins, and if I go to the availables, I'm just gonna go and install the blue ocean as well the reason i'm installing the blue ocean is i'm just going to show you quickly how easy it is to work with blue ocean while you try to work with the pipeline syntaxes and this is a kind of new operation which is available uh, this time with the jenkins uh, blue ocean theme so once you have this you can see that so many different uh, plugins are being installed once i select the blue ocean uh, you can see there is a REST implementation for Blue Ocean, Pipeline implementation for Blue Ocean, GitHub Pipeline for Blue Ocean, and many different plugins are being installed. Even Docker Pipeline is also being installed along with the Blue Ocean. So these things we'll be requiring in our future videos, but these are the installation that you really require to have while the plugin is being installed, while starting to work with the Jenkins Pipeline itself. So once the installation is fully done, I'll be back. I guess the installation is done. So let me refresh the Jenkins. You can see that uh, it's asking me the username and password to be entered again. And you can see that there is no more plugin to be updated. So the blue ocean is up and running, is already installed within my Jenkins as well, which is pretty cool. So you can see there is uh, this blue ocean uh, coming in. So once I select this open blue ocean, you can see that this new theme comes in and it tells me that there is no pipeline available, which is okay because we don't really have any pipeline created and there is no even a, not even a single repo available. So I'm just gonna create a new pipeline and it's gonna ask me, where do you store your code? So this is the new one, guys. We have never discussed this before in our uh, Jenkins discussion. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, do this time. So I'm just gonna select this uh, GitHub. This is where my repos are actually sitting and I'm gonna create a new access token pretty quickly. And I'm just gonna give a name, uh, maybe Jenkins if I have not given already. So let's try to generate one. And I'm gonna copy the uh, personal access token or PAC, PAT. I'm gonna paste this. I'm gonna connect it. So once I connect this, you can see that it takes my organization as execute automation, which is pretty cool. And then I'm gonna create a new repository, choose a new repository from here, which is nothing but our Jenkins pipeline that I just created. That's the reason I actually created the Jenkins pipeline while the installation of our Jenkins was actually happening. So I'm gonna choose Jenkins pipeline. I'm gonna create a new pipeline. So you already know that we don't really have anything in our pipeline Jenkins pipeline repo yet. But once I create a new pipeline in our Jenkins, you can see that 
some magics are going to happen for you automatically which is pretty pretty cool and you'll be seeing that pretty quickly so you can see that this pipeline is now showing us a pipeline editor so this pipeline editor is like a graphical user interface you can actually modify the same thing from the jenkins file itself like a raw but uh, you can see that you can actually do the same thing from the ui itself so here i can actually choose the steps or the stages where you can actually say you're going to perform a build operation so this is one of the stage and here within the stage you can have multiple steps in it so let's say if you want to print a message so you can say something like uh, building the dotnet core application something like that so basically you should be doing a build operation but i'm just trying to print this time and once you do the build operation you can also do some sort of test operation so you're gonna perform a test stage and where you're gonna uh, perform one another uh, print message where you're gonna be telling testing the application something like that and once the testing of the application is done you are then going to do a deployment operation so here the stage is going to be a deploy stage and within this you're going to add a step here i'm just going to do a print method again so no big deal so i'm just going to say uh, deploying the app in is server something like that and that's it this is the pipeline that i have created very very generic pipeline directly from the jenkins blue ocean theme and i'm just gonna hit save and you can see this is the magic guys once i hit a save operation it tells me that saving the pipeline will commit a jenkins file to the repository so this is what i was talking about the jenkins file is going to be created from this particular jenkins pipeline so i'm just gonna select uh, all right what's changed created our first ever jenkins uh, pipeline in this course all right and you're going to say it tells me it asks me that you're going to commit to the master or you're going to create a new branch and give a specific name for that branch i'm directly going to commit this to master for now because there is only one branch for now so once i hit save and run you can see that it is going to commit the code directly or the pipeline directly to the repo and it's also going to execute for us so you can see that once i hit it you can see it is now checking out the code from the version control which is nothing but our extra automation jenkins pipeline.git as you can see and it also executed the pipeline for us there you go so within 19 seconds magics happened so if i click the build you can see that it printed us the message building the dotnet core app and then testing the application and it also deployed the application to the ia server basically all virtually there is nothing really magic happened behind the scene it's all just the text and everything happened for us within jenkins pipelines blue ocean theme which is very very awesome so now if i go to the uh, repo that i have within my Zoo automation and if i hit refresh you can see that there is a jenkins file being sitting on the root directory of my project so this is what happens so if you have a jenkins file within your repository it should be within a root file or root directory of your project that's a good practice but if you have multiple jenkins file within your project for some reason maybe for testing you have a different jenkins file maybe for staging deployment you have a different jenkins file or production deployment you have different jenkins file you can probably put that in a directory and then you can refer the jenkins file based on those deployment of the environment but in usual cases the jenkins file will be sitting on the root directory and that's what happened here within the project you don't really have any source code but still jenkins automatically puts the jenkins file within our root directory and if we see this jenkins file over here you can see that it magically created a pipeline code for us like this so this is basically a groovy dsl or groovy's own domain specific language and this is pretty much exactly inheriting from the scripted pipeline syntax that we saw earlier in our videos with the pipeline projects but this is the real new declarative pipeline syntax of jenkins which is introduced pretty much recently and this has almost a different syntax or maybe pretty close to the syntax of what we have discussed earlier with a scripted pipeline syntax 
We'll discuss more about this declarative pipeline syntax in our upcoming videos or maybe the next video we'll talk about declarative pipeline in even more detail. But yes, this is what is the code which is automatically generated by Jenkins for you. Well, as that said, in our next video, we'll discuss about the declarative pipeline in even more detail and what is the differentiation between the declarative pipeline versus the scripted pipeline and understand how things work. So once again, thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for our next video. Thank you.